players talk about lack of energy. Was it that simple, or were there other things involved? I have no idea why they would have lack of energy. They quit playing after two hours for two days. You know, and it wasn't shooting a ball shouldn't take energy, should it? Truth of the matter is, we haven't ran a ball down from behind for how long? Which is what we were really good at. We haven't made a steal below the foul line in how long? That's effort. That's not lack of energy. That's lack of effort. They had the lack of part right. They just, they just didn't. Yeah, they just didn't have. They, they, they substituted uh, energy for effort. The last basket, eight. Just a great individual play from from the kid, or now we probably had the wrong guys in the game. I mean, how do you catch it and go the length of the floor in five seconds? And we're supposed to be the best pressing team in America. How's that happen? You can't steer him one way or the other. I mean, he straight lined it from one end to the other end. Did you want the ball out of his hands? Absolutely. Put the wrong people in the game. Won't happen again. You've gotten good defense at the rim at the back of the press for most of this year. What was the breakdown there tonight? Well, I watched their film, and they're they're really good at penetrating and just throwing it up to their bigs. And uh, their bigs are they're both really bouncy, and we were not supposed to help up. We worked uh, yesterday and the day before on not helping up, and we obviously didn't work hard enough or long enough, or they just didn't give a shit. One of the, one of those three because they continually drove it and threw it up and we helped up. You, you always stress defense uh, in, in games like this. How much of a part did foul shooting play? No, oh, it played a big part. Foul shooting plays a part. The fact that we had people wide open and we can't pass the ball had a lot to do with it. I listened to them when we were, well, we were up three maybe. No, we were up more than that. We were up six. I listened to them uh, to play off a flat screen, and we turned it over twice. Turned it over twice, and then we threw it to them again for a layup. And then we just, I don't know what we did. We tried to bounce it left-handed, and it bounced up in the air, and they got it and went and scored. Um, I'm at a loss. You know, if you can't drive it at the goal, if you can't make a shot, if you can't make a pass, it's hard. And then you sit there and look, and I got, I got a play card. It's probably got 150 plays on it. My question constantly, every time my assistants ask me, is who passes the ball? We have 13 turnovers. They have 12. We're not going to win. 32% of our offense comes from our defense. 18 for 29. We're not going to win. Particularly when we went 10 for 11. 10 for our first 11. So you go 10 for your last 11. So we're 17 for our last, or 7 for our last 18. How are you going to win? And it's demoralizing. I think the most demoralizing thing in basketball is some guy to stand up there and miss two free throws. One out of two, you can kind of live with. I think it's very demoralizing. You, I, I mean, I just assume they throw it out of bounds. And that's something you should be. You can you can become a proficient free throw shooter with just work. You know, if you put enough time in, you you're you're, you're gonna you're gonna end up being a decent free throw shooter. It's funny, all the NBA guys, they take guys that are just great, great athletes that can't shoot, and they said, you know, we're going to shoot it enough. They'll, they'll learn how to shoot it some. 
but you got to want to, man. What do you think from Carter's performance? I mean, he's four assists on the triple-double tonight. Mm -hmm. I come in here every day, and I tell you the two guys that spend the most time in the gym are Javon Carter and James Long. He deserves it. Billy talks about basketball gods, that you can't cheat the basketball gods, that if you, you know, if you cheat the game, the basketball gods are going to get you. Well, he's had a pretty good year. He's been very consistent because he deserves it. When you don't come in the gym, when you don't respect the game, when you don't work at the game, I mean, Justin, think about it. I mean, I, I, I know I don't know if you wrote the story, but there was a story about Joe Alexander sleeping in the locker room because, you know, in, back in the old day in this place, you had volleyball and wrestling and gymnastics and graduations and everything else going on. So he had a blow up mat he put in, a, in, a, in the locker room so that when all that stuff got out of there, he could go in there and get his shots up, get his workout in. These guys got access 24-7 to the best practice facility in America. They're not Joe Alexander, obviously. He, uh, JC, JC puts that kind of time in. He deserves it. The guys that aren't in the gym don't deserve it. And, you know, and they give you they give you this lack of energy and all. Come on, man. These are guys that are going to be NBA players and play a hundred games. A hundred. What are we? We're what? I don't know what we are. They played eighteen games. There are uh, 32 games from the All-Star break. That's some phony stuff right there now. Don't have any energy. Come on, man. Those guys, and those guys travel every game. Oh, they're all going to be pros. Please. Bob, you say demoralizing. Um, in the moment, I've always thought it's demoralizing, like, Mike. In the moment, when it happens and it's deflating, or is there like an impending sense? No, of because you're, 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 everybody's looking at the scoreboard. Our guys are looking at the scoreboard. You're looking, okay, we're up three. Now we take it to five. You know, we can't, we can't lose unless we screw up two possessions. You know, and they hit two threes. It's demoralizing. I've always felt like going to the free throw line and missing two was demoralizing. I just assume they throw it out of bounds. You said the ways on though, like maybe it gets a little bit tight in those situations. That there's something that like you said they're looking. Uh, well, for Mike, but Mike, think about this: if you're in a gym and you shoot a couple hundred of them a day, like the good players do, you shoot a couple hundred of them a day. Do you think you get tight? No, those guys are the guys who want to go to the line because they put the work in. The guys that are afraid to go are the guys who deep down in know they, they got a heck of a chance to miss it because they have not put the time in. Anything else? Well, last, last play, you don't know, you know obviously what they're going to come out and you've got to guess that the, how they're going to defend you. Oh, no, Bob, I, 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 told, I told them they're going to try to get it to Woodard or Doolittle. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about your last play with 2.2 seconds left oh, and you're taking it out. Yeah. You, know, you, don't know, you don't know what the defense is going to be, so you have to come up with something. It landed a foot from one of our guys. A foot with two seconds to go. A foot. I assume he was supposed to tip the ball. Well, we were supposed to throw it to Sags. Uh, I'm starting to I'm starting to doubt if Nate how how good a quarterback Nate was. You know he keeps trying to tell me what a good quarterback he was. Well, that was that was uh, that was not a real. He's supposed to throw it to Sags. He's supposed to throw it to Sags, and Sags was either supposed to catch it and throw it to one of those guys, or tip it so one of them could run it down. It's the same play we ran to beat Duke in Alaska with Mal Levitt and Kenyon Martin. Brian Fletcher was was a quarterback. He made a hell of a throw.